Hey everybody, it's JK Walker and I'm coming at you with some exciting news. LS Droid for Windows has just had an update. And I know what you're probably wondering is what is LS Droid for Windows? So for you all out there that's not familiar with the program, LS Droid Windows is a project by Pete Sontag and it is actually to cover these older GM ECMs that TechLine seems to struggle with, right? So what it does is it offers you a simple cloning solution for those PCMs. And let me just show you some of the PCMs that it covers and we'll just talk about those, right? So the first PCM that it covers, and they're all the PCMs it covers now are going to look like this. They'll be in a case like this and this is what they look like, these older ECUs. This is what they consider a P01. So this is going to be from like your 9902 trucks, your Camaro stuff, your Astro vans had this PCM. This is the one you'll see a lot of times referred to as the 411 ECM, right? This is an ECM that they use for a lot of hot rod swaps and things like this. This is a drive-by cable um, ECM. It's the P01. It's got 512 kilobytes of memory. Um, and this thing is a workhorse. You know, they've used these in a lot of swaps. You know, this PCM is pretty you know, pretty, pretty popular. Now there's another version of this ECM. It's the zero, uh, I don't know if it's zero, but it's a uh, 896. That's the last of the digits on it. And uh, it's also a P01 as well. Now we move into the P59s. Now, of course, it's kind of hard to see this because we have a green screen here, but as you can see, this is a P59. We've got the cover off of it. Now, the reason for that is when they went to the P59, they went with a one megabyte flash chip versus a 512 kilobyte. So you have more resolution on your maps and things like that. But also, this is when we seen the big jump to um, drive by wire. So we went away from a cable throttle body and we went to drive by wire in 03. But if you look here, the one thing that you'll notice is there's two of the variations of this ECM and this one doesn't have it. So if you was to take it apart and look right here, some of these P59s will have an intake air control uh, controller here, right? But this one here does not have that controller. So therefore, this one here wouldn't work on, say, a V6 truck 03 up, right? Now, the trick to that is, is if you take the ones from a V6 truck, they will fit everything. Uh, if you take the one from a V8 drive-by cable it may, or drive-by wire, it may or not fit a V6 truck, or it may not fit like a V8 box truck that has a, a cable throttle body on it. So that's one of the big things you have to watch out for. Now this ECM is easy to identify by. It has a green and blue connector where you have blue and red with the P01. Now, other than these ECUs, you have another ECU. And that easy ECU is called the P04. That is a blue clear connector, and that is the PCM that you are going to find in like the old 3.8 vehicles and a lot of the earlier V6 vehicles from General Motors. And last but not least, the LB7 controller, right? That ECU is also going to be a blue clear connector, but the LB7 is a beast of its own, right? So it's pretty awesome that they give cloning abilities for that. Now you're probably wondering, what tool do I need to use? And well, one of them has been added with this update, but one of the things I want to you know, let you know is that all of the OBDX tools are going to work with it as long as they have that VPW circuit. So if you have an older tool, do not worry because it's not being phased out. So, we're going to start with the original tool, the VT. Now, this is a version 2. I have a version 1 as well. It's just a different case, right? So, the VT, this one here has your VPW. Um, I think it has some other protocols in it as well. This was kind of like the OG OBDX Pro device, right? It was just in a different case. Then, came along the GT. So, the GT is has CAN. VPW, UR, GM LAN, uh, I think a couple other maybe protocols for like holding stuff like ALDL. That's this one here, the OBDX Pro GT. Then the one that was just added and the newest device to the lineup would be the OBDX Pro VX. So the VX, from what I've gathered, it has VPW in it and it has CAN. 
but it doesn't have all of the protocols the GT has. So this is still going to do a lot, it's just not going to do as much as the GT. So, is what we're going to do is we're actually going to open up the program and demo it for you and show you how to clone an ECM. All right, so the device we're going to try to use today, we're going to use the VX, right? Because I haven't got to use the VX, so I want to see how it works. I'm going to plug it into my bench harness here. I've got my PCM on it. I'm going to turn my power on. Now, one thing I will say is you want to make sure you have a good power supply. You want to have something that, you know, gives you like 13 and a half volts, something around there. Woo! The droid did me. So it says there's an updated list of operating systems that version of LS Shorts can support. Do you want to download those not list now? I'm going to just go ahead and select yes. I'm going to download that list. So now it says that we got the P04, E54. So the E54, I think that's the LB7 one there. The P01, P04 is just showing, you know, some more operating systems that have been added. So we'll just look here and you're wondering. So now we're hooked here and it's not connected to the tool though. So we're just going to go down here to where it says click to connect. Then we, in our drop down box here, we're going to find our VX. So there's our VX. It's on COM port 6. So we're going to select there. I'm going to hit connect. It says, would you like to use this device? Yes, I want to use this device. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then of course it's going to take me here. But it's, what I want to go is I want to read or write the ECM. So... Here we have a bunch of different options. We've got our PCM type. This is a P01. This is our operating system. This is the VIN number uh, that's in this PCM. This is our serial number. So our PCM status, of course, it's idle. We're not doing anything. And then this is our voltage, right? And like I said, you want to get that voltage nice. You don't want to try to program this thing barely at 12 volts. So we go over here, there's another tab that says key options. And this is going to be if you was to um, have an issue with like a tuner lock or something like that, or the seed key was scrambled, you would use this. Of course, you've got, um, if you wanted to just go ahead and write a file, you'd click here. But we're going to read the PCM and save the file. So we're going to click here. Um, I'm just going to save this as ls droid demo 2 because i done one earlier and that was just one i done without audio so i figured i'd do another one so we're going to say this is ls droid demo 2 and we're going to go ahead and let this run through so it's loading the kernel it's doing everything and then it's starting to read the module so this module reads in about two minutes because um and if you was to read a p59 it's probably going to take you twice as long because it has twice the memory but i will say this out of all of the programs that i've used to like read and write these ls droid is going to be the fastest especially using these obdx tools you know uh jason and pete have done a really good job with the obdx line um and pete's done a really good job with this kernel here for these pcms so you know they do really really well so we're going to read this ECU out, and then we'll come back when this is done. All right, five, four, three, two, one. This PCM is now read, so it says it's completed. So it says it's clearing the read routine. Now we're clearing the active kernel in the PCM. So that's going to take about nine seconds, it says there. Let's see what else. Returning into normal operation, clearing the codes in it, clearing the codes in all the modules. So we're good there. Let's see what else it's going to have us do. It says turn the key off or 12 volt ignition power to the off. Okay. So we're going to key off. We're going to click next. It's going to give us 15 minutes. And this is very important, this PCM shutdown. Okay. On these ECMs, if you don't shut them down correctly, they're known, like on the rights, not to say VINs and things like that. So you want to make sure you follow these instructions clearly. So now we're going to go to next. <coughs> it's going to tell us to key it on. And then we're going to update app details. So therefore, we key it on. It's just going to go ahead and recheck this PCM and check everything. But we know what this is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just let this load up. Then we'll swap to our ECU that we're going to clone to, right? So there you go, you see that. Now we're going to hook up the ECM that we're cloning it to. So now I'm going to go here. I just want to re-identify this ECM. 
So we can see the VIN number has changed. The operating system is different. The serial number is different. This is indeed a different PCM. But now is what we're going to do is we're going to write this PCM. And we have different options. So if we were just doing the PCM calibration data, so let's just say that we were just updating the calibration data and not the operating system on that ECM. That's what we would select. If we were writing the operating system and all the calibration, this is what we would select here, the change PCM operating system. So if we were creating a PCM copy, a clone, right? That's what we're wanting to do. This is the option we select. Or we could just write the security block that's going to have your VIN number, your security data, things like that. So I want to create a PCM copy clone. So that's where I'm going to go and I'm going to, it's going to tell me select files. Now here is the, the precautions and saying what you need. You need a voltage that's going to be at least 12.3 volts. You need a good, you know, it's got to have 1500 milliamps at least to flash these ECMs. Um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff you can read through that, but of course we never read that stuff, right? We just click next. So that's what I'm doing. And we can go here and we can select our file. We're going to select that demo two file that I had there. And now we are going to start this flash. So now it's beginning to unlock the ECU, load the kernel, and it's actually going to start uploading that flash into the ECM. And we should, when we're done, we're going to have an exact clone. So what I'll do is we'll wait until that comes back and that's finished. And uh, then I'll we'll walk you through the rest of this. And five, four, three, two, one. We finished that. Now it's cloned. It, it, it is basically cloned, right? So now it's going to go through. It's going to do the same cleanup process that it done before. You know, getting rid of the kernel, clearing the right routine. Now it's returning the PCM to its normal operation. It's doing all the things it done on the read, but now it's doing it on the right. So now we're clearing the codes stored in the ECU and then clearing the codes and all the modules, which that is if we were actually on the car, right? Now, I will say this. I do not like flashing these in the vehicle because older vehicles like Class 2 stuff, they always have some rogue module that wants to cause a problem. So now it says, please turn the key on 12 inch power uh, to turn your key. Oh, turn it to the off position. So we're going to turn the key off, right? So now we're going to wait our 15 seconds. Now, like I said before, this is vital, especially since we just wrote this PCM. If we want that security block, you know, that, that section to stay like it needs to be, we need to make sure we do this correctly. So now, when and also when you key this off, you got to make sure that you keep power on the power wire, but key off just the ignition. So now we're going to select next. It's going to tell us to turn the key on. So now we're going to let it run for 15 more seconds. It's going to do the up, app updates. And when we go back, we should have everything that we had originally on the first time we should have there. So actually, when we take this computer and swap it between, it should be the same information. So when we look here, our serial number is 290931 is our VIN. 125 is our operating system. So we're going to go here. I'm going to slap the other PCM back in. I'm going to re-identify it. And look, 290, 931, 125, all those are still the same. Just like that, we were able to take this ECM and make a direct copy into this ECM here, right? And you can do that as well. It's super easy and it's really awesome. So you got to give a big shout out to Pete at LS Droid. And also don't forget to go join the LS Group Facebook page, right? Because that's where people talk about everything and help and support, right? And also go over to obdxpro.com uh, if you don't already have one. Grab yourself, if you don't already have the VT, right? Because the VT still works. Grab yourself either the GT or the VX, right? Grab one of these and definitely get to using this program because this is a really awesome solution that's going to save you a ton of, ton of time with trying to fool with SPS because SPS does not want to work on, or let me say not SPS, but SPS 2 TechLine Connect does not like to work with these older modules. It just doesn't. Every time someone tries it, it seems like there's a new issue, all right? So thank you very much for watching the video, and just remember, there's money in these streets.